In this video, I'm going to show you how to model this simple scene, add lighting, a camera and a basic animation to your object. Before I get started, let me show you my setup so that you have an idea of what I'm using to create this scene. I'm using a long-term support version of Blender, so this video should be good till July 2026. Now I'm in the workspace here in the layout tab and I have x-ray mode activated and I'm working in wireframe and you'll get an idea of why as I'm working through this video. I'm going to start by applying a plane so press shift A and select plane. I'm going to scale that by a factor of 10 so press S and a 1 0 and then press enter and I'm going to press control A and apply that scale. Next I go into edit mode and select the edge selection tool or mode even. Select the back edge and extrude that by seven and a half or 7.5. Next I'll select that connecting edge, press control B to enter the bevel editing mode, set the width at five and segments at 10. Next I'll select the top edge and activate snapping. You can either use edge or vertex here. Press E to extrude and then drag the cursor so that it snaps onto either the edge or a vertex at the front of that shape. Press Alt and left mouse button followed by F to fill in the faces on the sides and the front. Next change to the face selection mode and select both of the side faces. Activate the inset faces tool and just start by clicking on that and starting it off. Then we'll put the thickness at 2.5, actually mm, 2, and the depth at minus 1. That basically brings them out a little bit. Select the top face and repeat that, but put the thickness at 3 and the depth at minus 1. Now select those sections that you've just created and head over to the materials tab on the right, create a new slot and then a new material name it wall lights and click on assign and that basically assigns this material to only those faces you have selected in the emission section increase the strength to one then invert the selection create another new slot in the material another new material and call it walls on this one Assign it and increase the roughness to 1. Now you come out of uh, edit mode by pressing tab. And what we'll do nef next is add our focal point. This can be any shape you like. I've chosen the Suzanne monkey head for this. Now she's currently sitting halfway in the floor. So because I know she's two meters tall, I'm going to increase the location or the Z location to one. Now she's sitting directly on the floor. These steps where I'm adding a subdivision surface modifier aren't essential. It's just really for decoration. I'm shading smooth on both the room and the monkey head as well here. So let's just right click on each and choose shade smooth. I'm renaming that plane to the room so that I have a better idea of what that is. And then I'm going to add a spotlight. I'm 
Now that gets put in at the origin or the world origin. So I can move that by pressing G and Y to move it along the Y axis and then I'll move it 7.5 and press enter. Then G and Z to move it up and I change that by a factor of 7. Now rather than mess around with rotations I'm using an object constraint tracking to the monkey head Suzanne and that means it will always be pointing at Suzanne. Next up I'm adding a camera so shift A and add a camera. This always gets put in at a weird angle so you can cancel that out by pressing Alt G and R so that will reset its location and rotation. I'm then going to rotate it on the x-axis by 90 degrees, move it on the y-axis by 7.5 meters. In fact, no. Mm. A little different. Anyway, I'm moving it up by 1.25 meters, so G and Z to do that, and enter to confirm. And again, rather than messing around with rotation, I am just using the tracking to object constraint to track it to Suzanne then it will always be pointing at her no matter where I put her in the scene. Now I'm going to go to the shading tab so that we can see our finished result as it is now. I'm using the cycles render engine as I pointed out at the start of this video and obviously my GPU graphics processing unit to compute that makes it faster. In the render settings I've got the threshold at 0.1, the samples at 1024 and I've got denoise activated. In light paths I'm just using the default lighting. If you're using anything with volume just keep in mind you'll need to increase that there. If you're not using anything reflective or refractive you can also disable those for faster computations. And in the performance and threads, or sorry, performance and memory, I've selected use tiling and I've decreased that number to 256. Any factor of 2 will work well. In color management, I've gone for a high contrast as well. Now I'll select Suzanne and apply a new material and just give her some color here so we can see her better. And then I'm just going to spend some time adjusting the lighting. So for the lighting, I would need to go to the room and the material settings and select the wall lights and change the strength of the emission. I went for 0.25 here. That was a little bit dark. But again, I can do that in surface over here. I'll leave that as it is for now though because I want to adjust the spotlight. So I'm going to select that either by clicking on it in the scene or over on the um, hierarchy on the right. I'm going to increase the power to 500 watts, enable shadow core sticks, increase the blend to about 0.75, in fact exactly 0.75, and then adjust the spot size so that it basically just encompasses Suzanne rather than anything else. Now I'll increase the strength of the emission on the wall lights in the room to 0.5 and you can see there's a nice balance of overall lighting and a few shadows from Suzanne as well. I'm also using nodes in the compositing tab. So you would normally get the render layers and the composite but I've added an RGB curves by pressing Shift A and searching for RGB. And then I've just created this S curve to give a little more punch. Now if you don't see it on your screen, just go up top right and click on backdrop a couple of times and hopefully that will bring it there. And that shows you the result as you work with the compositing nodes. So if I just very quickly render that image, we'll see where we're at at the moment. 
So it always adds the compositing element after it's finished rendering. So you can see there, there was a quick flick between the original output and the composited output. Not bad. Probably some tweaking on the lighting there to make it a little more punchy, but it's fine for now. Now to add the animation, we're going to select Suzanne because we want to animate her. And we've got our keyframe slider set at 1. And I've pressed N to activate the panel on the right. And I'll move over the rotation of the Z and press I to insert a keyframe. Then go to the end of the timeline and plus 1, so frame 251. Type 360 degrees in the Z rotation and press I while hovering the mouse over it as well. And that gives me a keyframe at the start and end to give me a 360 degree rot rotation. But the interpolation mode is quite is different at the moment. So it's sort of slowing down at the start and the end. So I can change that by right clicking interpolation mode and then changing that as you saw on screen. So that will give me a rotation of about uh, 10 seconds that will be a full rotation at the same speed so I can always then um, just duplicate it in my video editing software if I wanted to. Now to export the video you'll choose an output folder you'll change the file format to MPEG video and the encoding to MP4 Then you can go to render animation and that will render out your animation. Anyway, that's it for this one. Here's the finished result from my render. I hope you have enjoyed this video. It will apply to lots of the material videos that I'll be releasing over 2025. So please remember to like and subscribe and of course hit the bell icon for notifications of those videos coming up. In the meantime, thanks for watching.